Okay, you guys, so I don't know what just happened at all, but anyway. <clears throat> I wanted to come and talk about um, divination or kind of how I see divination based upon the basic definition as well as based upon the definition for the Hebrew word that it comes from. So I wanted to also point out um, I wanted to point out to me based off of the very basic English version of divination divination, excuse me, an example of it in scripture, like I like to do often. So here we are, we are in the book of First Samuel chapter three. And this is going to be um, the account of the prophet Samuel. So it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. <clears throat> so everybody wasn't able to hear from God or have dreams and visions like that. Everybody didn't get that. It says, And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see, and ere the lamp of God went out, in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. <clears throat> and he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again. And Samuel, the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Excuse me. <coughs> And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, Go and lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord. For thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth <clears throat> of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore, I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if, thy, if thou hide anything from me, excuse me, of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, 
and did and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. All right, so I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> as far as with the scripture reading, what I would like to do next is I want to, um, I kind of want to do some word studies really quickly. And this is kind of what I do in my own time when I'm studying the Bible. So I like a Bible app that has the strongest concordance with the numbers so that I can click on the link and read and gather my own understandings um, based upon what I see there and what have you about what the words mean. So <clears throat> let's see what minister means. Sir. To attend as a worshiper, as a menial or a worshiper, figuratively to contribute to, be a servant of, to wait on, okay? So, this is what ministers are to do. They are to serve the people. They are to wait on the people, give the people what is necessary, what they need. Or they are also to minister to God by being making themselves of service to God. So to wait on, right? When we are at a restaurant, and I'm getting this as it comes to me, when we're in a restaurant and we are waiting on the server or the waiter or waitress to serve us, they have to come to us right and they have to ask us what or I don't want to say they have to but it's customary that as a waiter or as a waitress they come to us and they ask hey what can I get for you what would you like to do this and that and the third and it's even better if they you know really know the menu and are able to offer suggestions it's even better it's more helpful okay this is kind of the idea that I want to present that ministry or being a minister of God and or of the people of God, <clears throat> this is what that's like. You know, um, basically whatever they ask for, if we have the power to do it, we are to do it. So moving forward. So that's what minister deals with. And let's see, what other thing did I want to hear? Um, when it says there's no open vision, I want to look into that. So let's look into open. And so here's the words for open. It says to break through or down or over or burst or breach. So to break or burst out from the womb or so to open the womb, this would be that to break through or down, make a breach in to break into, to break open, to break up, to break in pieces, to break out violently upon, to break over or increase, or to use violence, to burst open, to spread or distribute. So that's the one that I really, really feel it's more what they're talking about. It's like, <clears throat> it wasn't widely spread to hear from God at this point, to know what God what God's um, desires were, what God was going to do. That wasn't something that was just known among the people like that. To be broken through, to be broken down. So even to be broken down, in our understanding now, um, I'm not going to say it wasn't the one back then, but I don't know because I wasn't there. But to be broken down, like how many times do we say for clarity's sake, you know, in layman's terms, hey, can you break that down for me? So in a sense, we're asking for something to be made more open. Open this up for me. Break it down so that I can understand. Okay. Let's see what else it says here. It says 
to break out in many applications, direct and indirect, literally and figuratively, abroad, right? So to make abroad, to make a breach or to make a break away or down or forth, to burst out, come spread abroad, compel, disperse, grow, increase, open, press, scatter, or urge. So yeah, that's like just saying it wasn't increased in the world. Like the way that it is now today, the word of God wasn't like that all the time. There were many people who had no, even Samuel himself did not know, right? The word of God yet. He was about to, and he was a prophet. He was already, like his mom had already set him up to be given to God for the purpose, whatever purpose God wanted to have for him, right? But even him, he didn't know it until God made it clear to him. So <clears throat> it was closed up. The word of God was not out here on every corner or in apps and um, even in, in, the, in the mouths of other people. It just wasn't like that. That was reserved. All right, so let's move on from that energy. I want to see. Mm -hmm. So I want to look at this word call. Kara. Kara. So it says to call, call out, recite, read, cry out, or to proclaim. <laughs> it says to call cry, utter a loud sound, to call unto, to cry for help, call with the name of God, or to proclaim, to read aloud, read to oneself, or just to read. And here's the one that I really feel like it's, I think it's three, and I think it's five, as far as like what it's meaning, to summon invite call for call and commission appoint call and endow that's the one that samuel was experiencing it was that one okay and even to proclaim like at this point the creator god source whatever one of them was being used as the arm of god at that point they were making a proclamation in regards to Samuel. And that proclamation was that we are summoning him, we are inviting him, um, we are calling and commissioning him, we are appointing him and endowing him with our word. Anyway, I just think that's so beautiful. So, <clears throat> and just eat, let's look at, I'm gonna read further. It says, through the idea of accosting a person met, to call out to, that is properly addressed by name, but used in a wide variety of applications, it could be to re beray self, that are bidden, call for, call forth, call self, call upon, cry unto. And it also says, be famous, be famous, Okay, um, for some reason that's really standing out to me, but I was thinking about it. Famous being the idea of being famous is that everybody knows you, and not just that they know of you, they know what you are are known for. Do you understand? Like, th there is a name that you have made for yourself because of something that you do, right? It also says guest, it says invite mention give name it also means to preach to make proclaim or make proclamation pronounce publish read renowned and say so yeah yeah all right um so i i, I feel led to say that what that's causing to happen in my brain right now is that basically when people begin to say that they're called to do something, 
I believe that some of those words that we saw, some of those phrases that we saw, some of those ideas that figuratively come to mind, that should be associated with them. Like, if they are called to do something, then they should become renowned. They should become famous for. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be on a grand, grand worldwide scale, but I mean, if it is, that's even doper, right? Um, I'm just saying that to say that it seems like everyone who was called, eventually their name lives on long after they have passed, right? So the next time, my, cause, cause it even says that you can call yourself in here. It says you can call self, right? So you can proclaim yourself as something, but I think that what seals the deal or what establishes a person in the fact that they are called, whether they call themselves or, but especially if they are called of God, they're going to be renowned in their circles. And eventually it's going to spread out. It's going to open up and go abroad and then reach places that they may have never even dreamed of, that they don't even know about unless God tell them, move on. Moving on, moving on. So what was that? That was called. That was called. So now we understand what calling can mean. It's proclaiming something. It is um, appointing someone into a position and endowing them with the gifts needed for that position. <clears throat> okay. So... The thing that I always thought was really neat was that God um, called Samuel and he heard his name being called repeatedly, right? So to bring it to modern day um, metaphysics and things like that, this is why it was so important for me to do this video to me and to tie it together with um, the Bible, which Christians and you know a lot of other people tend to um, ascribe to and to tie it to metaphysics. So there's this thing there's something called clear audience it's a it's a clear it's um a spiritual gifting that may, many people have it it's just some people's gifts are stronger than others and some people know it by clear audience other people call it something totally different but the general concept of clear audience is that you are able to clearly hear information given to you Okay. Um, that is not necessarily by a speaking voice outside of oneself. Like, so nobody's actually talking to you physically, but this is an energetic frequency that you hear that gives insight, that gives knowledge, that can even give wisdom, that can tell you something about yourself or about someone else that you would not otherwise <laughs> know unless you were um, helped by a spiritual being, okay? So, I also have learned, come to understand that when the phrase Lord is used, Lord does not have to mean God, creator, source. It could mean even an angel. It could mean um, another ranking official in the heavenly order okay which can sometimes even include i hate to say this for some people but it can include uh demons <laughs> it, it just can i hate to say that like because i know people think that god is just all love all light light but light and darkness both exist and though there will come a time where light will reign supreme right now light and darkness they coexist and they work together to test and try but I'm getting off subject so boom Lord I've realized and I learned through study and research just by looking at the word Lord I learned that it wasn't just okay let's just go to it let me just go to it because I don't want to so we have Jehovah here the existing one the proper name of the one true God um, it says the self-existent or eternal Jehovah Jewish national name of God, Jehovah Lord, compared 3050 and 3069. So we go to 3050, we have Yah, which is um, 
let's go over here. That deals with the Lord most vehement, which is an attribute of God. Okay, it's more like a title. Yehovah, we go back there, 3069, what is this? Yehovah. Um, and it says here, it just says God, and so that's that with that. Um, Lord can also mean like master, right, or governor. So like there's a master, there's also a mistress, which would be the feminine form of a master. But either way, a Lord is someone who has authority and power. And in this case, I guess because this is the Lord, like all in caps, that might be the one, the reason why they're saying that this is <clears throat> the most high God. All right. Let's see. So, yeah, but like I was stating, it's just, I thought it was really neat. And it also said, I also like the part where it was talking about tingling in the ears, right? Um, and the reason I like that was because personally, in my experience, I get a ringing in my ear before I am going to get a download of any sort. And a download to me is the information, okay, that comes, like in... Like, to me, I would consider Samuel getting a download about what was supposed to happen to Eli. That was a download. That's It's just information coming into the computer that is us, and then it can be output. Okay? So, um, yeah. Eli wound up giving Samuel a command, and that command um, determined what the output would be which was he had to tell Eli everything that God said would happen to him and why. So moving on, back to, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So where was the tingling of the ears? I think that was way further down. Okay, in verse 11, uh, where it was talking about, and the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth, that heareth it shall tingle. So I want to look at this tingle for a moment. Solal, solal, to tingle or quiver, to tingle of ears or to quiver of fear. It says, through the idea of vibration, right? Vibration ring if something rings it cre if a bell rings it creates a certain vibrational frequency okay um it says as ears in reddening also with shame or the teeth in chattering with fear so in this particular case this was like this was something that would cause fear okay um, Solal also means to sink or to be submerged, to tumble down, that is to settle by a waving motion or to sink, okay? So bringing down, bringing down, that's one thing this is dealing with, bringing down and it should be scary. Okay, let's see what this is about. Okay, we did that already. So basically, it's supposed to be kind of something that would be fearful, make people afraid once they hear this. Like, ooh, you know, we're going to pay attention to this because it's creepy. And it's also going to be, when you think about vibration, vibration causes ripples, right? This, this energy reaches far and wide. So the concept of tingling in this case meant that basically everybody that heard this was going to be, they were going to feel it. They were going to be more than likely made of foray. And if you ask me, it would be doing exactly what it was intended to do because this was a punishment, I'm sure. It was meant to really cause people to take note. It was like a marking. Take note of this. You know, the way that capital punishment or the way that, you know, sometimes in law, um, a ruling sets precedence. So pay attention, take notice, 
because this is what can happen to you. Okay, moving on. Let's go forward. Spirit, what else is here to talk about? Mm -hmm. Let's look at this no. In verse 7, it says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Okay. So, yada, yada, to know, to know or learn to know, to perceive, to perceive and see, find out and discern, to discriminate or distinguish, to know by experience, right? To recognize, admit, acknowledge, confess, to consider, to know or be acquainted with, to know a person carnally. Mm, so y'all, I could deal with that as well. To know how or be skillful in, or to have knowledge or be wise. To be made known, be or become known, be revealed, to make oneself known, to be perceived or to be instructed, to cause to know, to be known, known, one known acquaintance, to make known, declare, all this, okay, reveal oneself, okay, to make oneself known. So basically, he could not distinguish or he could not recognize, right, um, this particular version of God. And he was not learned of this so he may have been taught other things and about other um, attributes of God and deities and titles but this God he he wasn't aware of okay all right <clears throat> so he wouldn't have recognized what was happening like the way that Eli eventually perceived or rather recognized and was able to discern what was actually happening rather than just telling him keep on going back to bed and maybe getting frustrated it hit him it suddenly dawned on him that oh okay this is god calling and how did he know that um maybe he heard about it through learning and instruction or maybe he had experienced this for himself right <laughs> we you know so yeah cool um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Is there anything more, God? Here if. Let's go to this one. Look. Shama is the, the Shama is the Hebrew word for it. And this is what it means. It means to hear listen to obey huh that's I look this is why I really do be liking the Hebrew I don't know how to speak Hebrew what whatsoever right but let me tell you when I do look into it it's 1222 on the clock right now but when I look at it right and I look into these words I it really tends to excite me in my spirit to know how specific they could be you know um it, it, that's all i'll say it's like i just love to see how specific this says to hear listen to and obey anytime i've said i want someone to listen to me or to hear me this is exactly <laughs> what i be personally meaning i mean that i want you if you hear me, the way that I know you hear me is because you obey, whatever that may mean. And I'm not trying to be like a ruler or anything. I'm saying um, you consider what I've said and then you make adjustments that literally look like what I'm asking for or what I'm saying that I need. And that's how I know you heard me or you listened to me. You know, anyway, I've been thinking that and feeling that in my spirit for a long time. But anyway, it says to hear or perceive by ear. Perceiving, that makes me think about perception, which perception can deal with sight, right? And what we see can help us formulate opinions and ideas about things. But in this case, the seeing is by hearing. 
I could be lying by accident, not meaning to. So let me look up the word perceive. Let's define perceive. And I'm not looking it up on here. I'm doing that on my phone. You know what? But maybe I should do it on here. So let's open up a tab. Let's just go to Google. And let's say, oops. Define, okay, allow. Define, perceive. Okay, so that's cool. So now let's see perceive synonyms. Discern recognize right I'm gonna stick with I want to say recognize more so because um, <laughs> when you think of recognition our eyes right are one of the biggest ways that we can recognize however obviously I know that there are um, exceptions like if you are a person who is technically blind physically right you can discern and recognize things in a different way right that would be through maybe sight or through touch or through scent you can perceive that way right um, but yeah so I want to say recognize because when you look at someone or what have you then you can easily they become if you've seen them before you can recognize them right um, it also says tell so that's a speaking distinguish grasp grasp which grasp can be both literal or figurative, right? Literally grasping would be to take hold of something or someone to touch, right? But grasping in the figurative manner is still to understand, like, oh, well, I can grasp the concept. I understand the concept. Number two, it can mean to look on, to view, right? So yeah, that's why I was talking about perceiving is like, in this case, I was tying perceived to perception. But anyway, anyway, I digress. There we have that. So now, to hear of or concerning, okay? To hear as in have power to hear. To hear with attention or interest, listen to. To hear can mean to understand and they have in parentheses language here. To hear can also indicate of judicial cases. So to listen to and discern and distinguish between cases, right? To recognize whatever in order to assist with ruling in cases. Okay, it says to listen, give heed. <laughs> to consent or agree. See, look at that, man, I'm telling you. Part B of this means to grant, request. Like, so here's the thing. The part that I was saying that I feel like if a person really heard me, they're gonna consent or agree to what I'm asking, right? But another version of to hear is to grant request, which still goes in line with if I've asked someone to do something, if I've requested, if I've petitioned God even, right? Creator, source, to do something on my behalf. I know they heard me, right? I know that the Elohim heard me by granting my request. It says to listen to or yield to. Yielding to is altogether the same as listening or giving consent to. Okay, um, it says to obey or be obedient. So, yeah, man, to hear, it literally in this instance means not only to hear something like in your ear and know you can hear and heard something, but it means to listen to and obey. So, so in this sentence, and, and the instruction that Eli gave Samuel, which was so potent and so powerful, it's saying, God, here I am. So it's not saying here I am and acknowledging that, you know, I'm present 
right? It's saying, not only am I present, I'm going to also make myself available to you. That's dope. All right, so I'm not sure how long this video is getting, and I don't want it to be entirely too long. So I'm going to stop recording here. Oh, yeah, it's really long. So I'm going to stop recording here. If you guys um, enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like me to go more in depth with some of the word studies like I did a little bit earlier in here, um, <clears throat> comment that below. Give some insight on scriptures that maybe you'd like for me to do some of these breakdowns on. And when I get the time, you know, or if I am not going to lie, if I'm interested myself, I will definitely do it. And I can't say that I won't even if I'm not. Like, I might be interested. I love this type of stuff. So just keep me posted if there's some scriptures you'd like to look into the Hebrew on. I don't have a problem doing that. All right. So without further ado, this is me signing off. I'm going to say peace, love, light, and darkness which all work together to bring balance and harmony first within ourselves and then within our world. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you won't